Musk. Basically, your options are Akali, Silas, and I think the LeBlanc that we mentioned earlier could be an option as well. The upside of Akali is that I think your mid-jungle 2v2 becomes a lot better than it could otherwise be. I think that obviously we have seen the Poppy and Azir combo be pretty decent because you can... Um, this is this is a tough uphill battle for D+. We'll see how they're going to do it. You hop into the rift for game one. And then go from there. But what this does is it means that Karia is so much harder to actually take down. He went barrier as well. So the extra efficient uh, combat stats that you gain from the Doran's Blade mean that, in theory, you should be having a much easier time into a lane that is, again... It's precisely what they're going to look for already. Carrier just throwing out some shots, probably looking for a level 2 uh, D+, but Carrier doesn't really care about that. He can still shoot uh, no matter what level he is. Kellen might need to slink into the Fog of War to get some of that health back. Oh, he might be able to smite oh, it yeah. away here. They don't know that he's in the brush, but they should suspect that he's coming towards this objective. It's a very impatient blue buff as well that is going to move back into the pit. Oh no, I'm starting that one up again. I think every amount of time... Oh, there's a flash in with the wall bank from Ona. Lucid trying to ease him out of this. And he should be able to escape, but it looks like Owner has won the battle. As Faker's teleporting back. Owner is still here, going to be able to lock this one down, but Kellen a little bit late on this one, and Showmaker not going to be able to get in there either. So Owner able to steal away the blue buff and get himself out. As oh, that, was a, that was a dangerous one there from Faker, but uh, Owner is going to be here. Killer Instinct going to be thrown out, and that is Owner just picking up the kill. Good bait to come through there, and Showmaker really wanted it. And the Killer Instinct is an ability for Kaisa. It's not Akali. That is perfect execution, but... I do think it would be worth it if you do get it, but it's such a big risk here as... Um, yeah, Faker going in here, I think took a big risk with that, but knowing that Owner was there felt relatively safe. And then here, yeah, Showmaker is just out. And if he flashes the wall, then maybe it's enough, but they layer the CC in a way that... I don't know if it really had a big window there to flash, and if he flash all those, I think it makes sense because bot lane is bleeding. Oh, no yeah. ultimate available for Lucid, and yeah, I think that uh, I understand his attempt. He's going to try and go for a steal here. All right, Steadfast Presence does come on over, and Lucid might have to just flash away. He is going to. Um, didn't really have to, but sometimes you just want an opportunistic uh, chance at a Drake. Okay. Yeah, and if the rest of his team is there at the same time and there's some chaos, then maybe that works. But on well, the first time we've seen Lucid not be on the same page of the rest of his team as Kalin. Yeah, can he find the Bone Skewer is the question. He decides instead to throw Showmaker back. The arrow is going to be picked up and there is the kill. Ona comes on in and takes down the Akali, but Faker does burn down as well. So D-plus are on the board, but I think that T1 are on the board once again. Unless Kellen can get himself out and it looks like he should be able to do so. Gives him a thumbs up as he exits. They have Fate's Call, remember. So just waiting. Oh, got to hit that one. Not going to be the case, and uh, no real opportunity is aiming! Just dead. Okay. Well, hmm. he's 40k. I don't think this one is uh, is done just yet. Oh, Carrier could be in a lot of trouble here. Another ult does go basically nowhere. The arrow is going to fly through, though, as Lucid gets himself a permafrost, but he's still tanking the turret. Baker is going to be taken down first, though, and Lucid, another couple of those need to be there, but the volley is blocked. And now Showmaker looks for it, doesn't find the backflip shuriken, and Carrier will stay alive. Kellen, not so lucky. A, a rousing success as oh, Kellen. Yeah, Kellen is very dead. Um, we could probably surmise what happened there. Kellen was trying to do vision things and died. Uh, obviously, you can expect Kellen to be there, but that by its uh, alone, not going to be enough. And Karia and Guma played out very safely. Dragon is about to come up here, and DK really were looking for this trap. Yeah, Arrow is going yes. to snag Kellen there, and he's just dead. Just no chance. And he almost got himself out of the way, but Janet Crystal Arrow hitbox has been a thing for many, many, many years. And it's a, it's a free kick gold lead now. I think that DK get one Hail Mary. Yep. You know, they got one team fight where maybe the backline overextends. You get a big Gnar ultimate into the wall. Uh, Kalin and Showmaker go haywire because do note, there are a lot of squishy targets on the enemy team. If you can get past the front line. Uh, Amy, oh, oh, gonna have to flash and does also have to cleanse because the arrow still clips him. And Kellen now going to be at the mercy of Carrier as well. Grimyushi catches up to, oh my goodness, just Pierce Ren and he's dead not in the best of places at the moment. And also, uh, like, their engage is 
the yeah. Glacial Prison. It is. And so you just avoid that as Empress Divide is going to throw Lucid underneath this turret. Carrier just free firing, but they do manage to take down Faker. And there's the double for Carrier as well. Zayus now looking for this, does find the third Q and aiming. Gonna That's miss a 1v2. another ultimate. It is. And Zayus is running real quickly. It's a 1v2! It is. It is. Um, and aiming's now melee range with a with a Kasante, and now he's dead. Uh Kingen is now mini Nar as well. Able to get out of the way of a few of these Qs though, and Zayus gonna get flashed on. There it is, the boomerang to the back of the head. That was very close to a two for nothing for Zayus. The, the bit that you really need to focus on is the Baron. Has now been started up by T1. Uh, Lucid is getting bullied out here by Carrier, who does have full ownership of this jungle. Lucid down to 50% before any of this has really happened as there's the ulti. Fate Score going to come through here as well as Ona will send the Nar back to the rest of his teammates and King and kind of happy with it, I guess. Yeah, I think he might have died <laughs> otherwise. Yeah. But uh, they didn't want to run the risk. They do still have uh, a lot of the other team fight ultimates available. Oh, Arrow going to connect once again. It's Faker just scoops in the Pike, who's dead mid push over the wall. Gingen has Maganar, like it's now or never for DK, but. Oh no, Lucid has to Arctic Assault himself out of this. There's going to be no smite in the pit, and Kingen's Maganar is running out. You can see low health bar here onto Ona, but it's still just ticking down, and Carrier is just pushing the jungler away. He's going to solo him. And now Steadfast Presence means you're not making it out of this one. Zayas going to pull the Nara around. And Showmaker, can you be the hero, is the question. Looking to get over the wall, but he's not going to get there. Owner just being poppy and avoiding death as Carrier says he's the AD carry now. As he takes down aiming another solo kill. He's 7 0 5. I'm trying to work out there is Carrier's top damage. <laughs> that's just, that's you not know, fair. Things that are happening in this game, I guess. And D-Plus desperately trying to defend these Nexus turrets. All, also probably thinking a lot more about what to do in game number two, because this one is all over but the Cryon as Lucid. Nice little fade away there onto Ona, but it's onto Ona, so it doesn't really matter. Kingen's got a Mega Narbar, but not a lot of health. Because he's just taking poke damage here from Faker. The flash in. Faker, Emperor's Divide onto three. And he's going to be absolutely fine. Ona finds a double knock up. The arrow sails by majestically. And Kellen is off on the side. He's not going to be able to stop this Nexus turret from going down. And not going to be able to do anything about this Nexus that's also about to explode. Aiming. Going to die once again. And T1 will celebrate just before they finish the task. And that one did not quite work out there for D+. He did. That was that was nice. And oh, Showmaker Faker actually, Faker would be the boom boom damage. Ah, uh, because at the end landed that three man. Yeah, no, you're right. Did a lot of work there. Ah, uh, very unfortunate. Well, I think we can still. It's, it's he close almost enough. doubled his eighty carries down. <laughs> um, because we do expect Zayas to really pummel. Has played this a ton. And this is one of Carrier's specials. Yeah, that that really is a uh, no lucid. You don't get to play the game. This though. Kind of the same thing. The value of the Vi really is going to be pretty substantially mitigated. Same for the Rakan. Wait, no, play throwback. that mental game. I, I really like that. Let's jump onto the Rift here for game number two. Which, you know, Varus unfortunately struggles with a lot. I really like the Lethal Temple build. I feel like it's uh, quite interesting in that both builds actually are really good at the moment. As Zeus is uh, deciding to be a complete nuisance here. Yep. See if he's able to uh, maybe reset a timer here, put Lucid on the back foot right from the get-go. He's able to do so. Does uh, make the Blue Sentinel a little bit upset at him before they do make their way back oh, to the lane. They and do know this is happening, but I, I, I don't know if there's anything you can do. Like the Q smite? Yeah, how do you how do you actually uh, stop that one? And, and the thing here is that uh, Lucid specifically went W start, which is the best way to start off uh, on Vi, as in the most damage and the best clear. But if you don't have Q, like you can't really punish the Aatrox ever there. Yeah. Well, you can see we're looking for a little bit of a knockup already. The Ignite is down as aiming looks for the Q. The flash forward and Kellen grabs first blood in the bottom lane. They took last game personally. Uh, we got a grand entrance here on the bottom side of the map. Let's focus on that for a second as Carrier has been ignited and still looks somewhat unperturbed. But uh, he might need to be a little bit because that health bar is quite low. Better in this lane in comparison to last game. As Gumiushi is able to dodge himself out of the way, has the ghost this time around. Good movement, but he's still going down low. They do not manage to get the feather pullback to get any sort of snare. So Aiming and Kellen not going to find a kill in this game thus far. 
Lucid looking to try and opt into finding something else here. Is Carrier going to be engaged on? Bolt Breaker going to come in as well as Showmaker is making his way down. Gets the flash out from the Tom Kench, and that will be valuable. Targeting this guy is going to be important as Chains of Corruption going to come in there as Featherstorm comes down. Very aggressive move from aiming as Gumiushi's down low, but Ona will turn up looking to try and save his bottom lane, and that is going to work out here as Faker reaps the rewards in mid. And they're not actually able to get a kill there. There we are. Yeah, Grand Entrance coming in. Another Ignite is down as well, but only one Feather does pass through. Battle Dance going to have to be utilized here by Kellen. Uses the second charge as well as aiming, just taking shot after shot. The flash is late, but it's still going to be enough there as the Magnet Storm does pull back the Rakan. But Lucid looking for his opportunity. The flash forward doesn't work there from Kellen. The Carrier not going to go aggressive. There is the Mantra in Cuba Gumiushi sidesteps it. It's not going to be enough to keep him alive. And now Carrier, I think, knows his fate. Looks for the Tongue Lash to try, to try and find a cheeky little kill, but Showmaker might be gifted too. Aiming, actually, going to be the one that collects that as Faker continues to mow down the minions. Uh, but still, if Zayas finds himself in a team fight and can run amok, it could be very dangerous times. We saw what Dudu did yesterday, and uh, that was pretty ridiculous. As now Ona looking for an opportunity. They haven't started off this Drake. Is now Kellen burning down. He's able to get himself out, and now Carrier looking for his opportunity. Tongue not going to find too much, Ooh. though, unless his teleport is going to come in. There is oh. the teleport, but this Drake is just going to go. Can they find a team fight on the back end, though, is the question. Mantra Q does a fair bit of work here. Is Showmaker looking to make his way over? Magnus Storm is the engage on top of him. The Shockwave is fantastic, but not enough damage. And the rail's going to go down all out onto Carrier as Kingen looks to catch up to him, but it does not work. Dissonance movement speed's going to be there, and Zayas, he's parked in the top lane. He's going to grab first turret block. Oh. Yeah, which we all know is better. Sort of like strategy is now aiming and Zayas going to be fighting one another. There is the flash forward quickness there as well as Zayas in a bunch of trouble. Still does a fair bit of work and still is able to heal a lot. And now Kellen just really wants to try and stop him. It's not going to work out there and he will uh, survive. And that means T1 with man advantage in mid will be able to take down that outer turret. Okay, now he should be dead. Uh, or at least have to flash, right? Well, he does. Uh, yeah, there was a Vi there this time around. So cease and desist. Cease and desist, making us look a bit silly. So Finally plus, punished. Yeah, there we go. We'll yeah. be taken down. And so that is Bounty Gold going on over here as well. Um, I guess hope. But this is certainly looking a whole lot better. Of course, we know that Aiming absolutely loves any opportunity he gets to hop onto the Zaya. Same thing can be said for Kellen and his, uh, his Rakan as he goes in once again. They're looking for Ona, who will get charmed by the quickness, and he looks to be going down. There we go, Lucid locks down that kill. Now Carrier going to be slowed up and is going to have to flash to get himself out of the way. Faker once again hitting turrets every time there's a fight. He's just going to hit it gonna get another, until they convince him not to. So Soul Point not going to be picked up by T1. They will break an inhibitor turret. They might also uh, take down Carrier. That would certainly be a good thing here for D+, but it's the grander problem is your base is dying. That is grub value right there. As Kingen is going to walk himself up there, he is able to find him with a bit of the jump scare there, but they do just back away immediately. And you can see, immediately, oh, okay, Kumiushi could be in trouble. There is a really nice chance of corruption to keep him safe. As Kellen gets himself out of there as well. They are keeping their health bars relatively high as Lucid lying in wait off on the side, wanting to stop an Aatrox flank angle potentially. Now they're looking for Faker. Shockwave is just used on top of his head. Bit of a mistake there from the GOAT. As Carrier devours him. And he's not going to be punished too much for that one as they oh, slink into drops. the brush. Oh my goodness. They get the ward down. The World Ender comes in and now the Featherstorm is there for aiming. That'll keep him safe for now as Owner is getting so, so low. And Lucid dives on top of the Aatrox, but it's not going to be enough to stop him ripping them to shreds. They get the knockup, but is it going to be enough? The answer is no. He is just too big. And Ona able to jump in on top. It's a double kill for Faker as well. And somehow, it's a clean ace. Holy but shit! Wasn't really oh. an angle there. And you can see, like, what, what do you do? Yep, no translation oh. needed for that one. That was not exactly what uh, D Plus were aiming for. Uh, that was unintended pun. Possibly the a flank angle coming in here from Kellen as there's the quickness. The Devour comes out immediately. Faker in relative safety. There's the Shockwave as well. They're trying to keep themselves alive. It's a good redemption as Ona will be punished. 
So D+, plus, they invest a whole lot of their health bars, but they are able to get at least one off the back of it. Uh, and bringing us to that third game is Lucid. Yeah, looking for the angle here. Doesn't have Cease and Assist available. Will be able to find the Vault Breaker into Faker. Goes Golden once again. Knock up, not going to work out there for Kel and his carrier. Just walks it in menacingly. And, okay, King, and can you make this one happen? They managed to take down the Tom Ken Shazayas. Once again, he gets himself into the fight, aiming, taking all of the damage in the universe. But the Cassante is doing some Cassante things. Faker able to take him down in the end. But look at this. The world does seem to be ending here. As Showmaker tries to put him on a leash, it's not quite working. At least he's able to slow him down. The inner flame comes out once again, and Zayas does need to be careful, so he will back away. Making this place for his team has actually been but oh, behind his Faker. Okay, they're going for the angle here. His quickness into the back line. Kellen just taking so many arrows, and Gumushi's going to lock that one down. Ona getting himself in there as Kerry gets a knock up onto aiming. Good feather pull. But Kerry is just keeping him out of the fight. Lucid now trying to be a frontline for him as they dive on in. Kerry gets a double knock up, and the flashes are now raining in, but they've lost the Zaya, and that means they've lost the fight. Kerry looks like a solo laner and he also thinks like one as well as he looks for the 1v1 against the low health Kingen. Kingen is uh, the Cassante, right? So he's uh, feeling okay about it. Zayas gonna have to come on over and finish the job, but it is going to work out. Ocean Soul gonna be gifted to T1. So it's the first 25 and then, you know, 25 after that, 25 after that. And it's a su subscription model, I'm pretty sure. Um, Everything's a subscription yeah, model these nowadays, days, uh, Subscription model. Anyway, D Plus gonna try to convince Owner to leave the area, and but instead they are opting in for this kill onto the Aatrox. He does just pop like a balloon. That's what happens when you can't push your buttons. T1 are just going to destroy this uh, bottom inhibitor turret. DK gonna look to try and back, and they got an Aatrox once again, and they lost their base as a result. They gotta find a miracle here, Atlas. They gotta pull the trigger because this Elder is going down extraordinarily low. And there is Zayas, looking for that angle to make his way into this fight. D+, plus, he's gonna have to try and pull the trigger, they're not gonna be able to take it. And there's the flash forward from Gumiushi, does not find the Chains of Corruption. The Carrier finds the Tongue Lash onto Showmaker, they're trying their very best to get themselves out of the way. His Ona, a little bit early on the Magnet Storm, as now the Cease and Assist is gonna come through onto Gumiushi, but Lucid is just going to burn down. The Wrath of the Dragon will land on his head, and T1, they're not going to be stopped now. Exodia has been completed and the Nexus is in their sights. And T1 going to push 4 to 2 0 here, putting them in first place. Yeah, there is the Grand Entrance. They're going to be able to find a little bit of uh, Flipper Rooney onto Faker here, who does manage to Zonyas. There's the Devour though. And aiming, trying to just keep Zayas at arm's length. He might be able to do so as he dashes away and not going to quite work out there. T1 still have some Nexus turrets Maybe. to deal with. Maybe the eulogy started a little early there, Atlas. Hold up. Well, this uh, inhibitor is going to go down. So it's three inhibs. So maybe the eulogy just needs to be extended a little bit longer. Should be coming in. Yeah, teleport is going to bring Faker back in once again. Featherstorm going to come down as Kerry just standing on top of him. There goes Kellen. And Gumiushi, he's still alive. He's still got full health. His aiming is just going to get CC'd and destroyed. There's the double. Showmaker's up. Um, but he's going to miss the Q, and the Wrath of the Dragon comes out of Faker. They will be able to take down the Nexus. T1, 2-0 against D+, and they will claim first place in the LCK. Thank you.